Okay, Romans chapter 2, verses 1 through 11. Uh, let's remember the context of what's going on here. Paul's writing a letter to a divided church in Rome. Christianity at this time was not considered something deeply separate from Judaism. It was like a denomination of Judaism. I and mean, the idea at this time was that the natural fulfillment or inevitable evolution of Judaism was Christianity. It was not separate from Judaism. This was, in some sense, Christianity was super Judaism. And as part of a super Judaism, the Gentiles were going to be allowed in. But now there's a conflict between the Jewish Christians and the Gentile Christians. If you recall in Romans 1, Paul was talking to the, taking the Gentile Christians to task. He took them to the woodshed, if you will. He's basically saying, you people were all idol worshippers before you became Christians. And you were horrifically immoral and degenerate sinners as a result of your idolatry. And you can imagine that the Jewish Christians were nodding their, he their heads and saying, Yup, that's right. You know your place, you bunch of former pagans. You know your place. But then immediately Paul says, Wait, Jews, now it's your turn. And he starts ripping into the Jews. And we see this ripping starting more in verse 12, which is, uh, and we'll talk about that next time. But basically he says, You had the law, you had the prophets, you had the revelation from God. And you still screwed it up. What is your excuse? Paul has basically brought both sides, Jews and Gentiles, down low. Both teams are really messed up. He's saying neither one of you has anything to be bragging about. The Jews are saying that you're better than Gentiles. The Gentiles are saying you're better than the Jews. Paul is saying that in terms of merit or moral point, they're both the same. They have zero, or even worse, they're in a deficit. In verse 1 of chapter 2, Paul makes a point that you cannot pass judgment on one another because, quote, you are condemning yourself because you who pass judgment do the same thing, end quote. Now, I think this verse is subject to some misinterpretation in our times. It does not mean we as Christians never judge. It does not mean everything is okay or everyone gets a pass. We never judge. Clearly, we pass judgment. We do it all the time. We, and we should in many cases. When someone sins in church or does something grossly immoral, we pass judgment. And Paul does throughout the Bible. And so do we. We should. When we see something terrible, sinful, or immoral in the world, such as racism, oppression, cruelty, crime, violence, or sexual immorality, we pass judgment. And again, in times we should. Now, this judgment needs to be done with kindness, mercy, and wisdom. It needs to be careful. But nonetheless, in principle, we do judge when necessary. In this passage, Paul's mes message is much more narrow. He means don't pass judgment in the church and don't pass judgment in this particular context. Saying, Jews, don't judge the Gentiles. Gentiles, don't judge the Jews. You're both equally guilty. You are all both helpless. So you are unified. You're all on the same ground. You're all unified in your need for the mercy of God. So that's basically the message in, uh, in the, the, the verses in the chapter that we read. Now, we are not living in the first century. We are not Jews, and we're not exactly, we, we are Gentiles. We're not Gentiles the way these guys understood them to be Gentiles, minority in a Jewish church. Um. And aside from historical interest and historical trivia, what, does the, what do these verses mean for us? Most of you, I would imagine, have been going to church all your lives. Maybe you barely remember when you first became a Christian. Do you have any memory of who you were before you accepted Christ as your Savior? And I'm going to guess that your life, even before you became a Christian, I mean, realistically, you weren't really that bad. I mean, how, I mean not grossly immoral or sinful. I mean, how horribly sinful could a pre-teen Korean-American Korean -American kid growing up in the suburbs of Philly really, really be? And I wonder if you know other people who are, well, how can I put it, you know, really bad compared to you. Maybe you don't think it a lot, but come on, you know who they are, and you must think it sometimes. Um, and I wonder what we think about them and how we understand us compared to them. I remember a particularly hard time in my life in my 20s. I mean, I was trying to be a good, faithful, disciplined Christian. And I know I was wrong, but I remember thinking at the time, I know I'm sinful. I get that, God. I know that. But God, no, seriously, I'm better than those guys. 
and those Christians, and I think they're having a much easier time than I am. And I feel like you're bringing a lot of stuff on me. Uh, and again, I think I'm better than them. And those other Christians, I mean, they're barely trying, you know, but I thought, God, I'm really, really trying at a great cost of myself. And I've been doing this my whole life for as long as I can remember. And I know it's wrong to think these thoughts, but uh, I felt that way and I felt indignant. I mean, I thought I deserved better treatment from God. Again, I knew it was wrong, but again, it was just how I felt. Um, on a relative scale, you know, the Jews looked better than the Gentiles. But Paul says they were given a massive head start, a tremendous advantage of the Gentiles. And so they can't judge or feel superior. And I wonder if in this application, maybe we're more like the Jews than the Gentiles. We feel like we've been Christians for a long time. This is our church. And we feel like we've been pretty moral most of our lives. And even though we sin, our sins aren't that bad. There are people who are far worse than us. And we can't help it but judge them a little bit. Uh, so me, me at that time, even now, if I appear to be better than others, at least in my own estimation, I don't get credit for it. It doesn't actually make me a better person. Even on the outside, I look better or my act is much more polished. In fact, I face a greater judgment from God because of what he already gave me. I'm held accountable by God for what I've done with my gifts, not for where I am morally, externally. And I have no right to feel indignant or morally superior because I'm in no position to judge. Because God looks at me not for what I am, but what I've done with what he's given me. And he's given me a lot of advantages. And I wonder if God's given you a lot of spiritual moral advantages. And that should not make you feel superior, but that should actually make you feel humble.